Hey, good morning. Are you ready to get going this morning? Man, I'm sitting here now and I'm thinking it's funny how when when you switch on your mind, let's just put that nice beautiful thing over there. When you switch on your mind, it's funny how other thoughts go and when the intent is for something specific, it's like my mind switches on on different levels, you know. But also I've realized that it doesn't matter how hard I try in those mindful se sections. As soon as I enter into the area where I'm asking God what to do, the thoughts that come through, I know has to be from Him because it's not things that I'm sitting here that I'm going, no, I never would have thought of that. <laughs> so, you know, as we've been talking about these changes that, that we go through and that we need to go through sometimes and filling your mind with God's Word, I'm also sitting here this morning and I'm thinking about times where I've tried in the past to stop doing things that I know wasn't good for me. Even immoral things, sinful things, sinful behavior and all that. Things I've tried to change. And the only way to change them, I realized that automatically, eventually, I started trying to do different things. To stop resisting as it were. Before I even dove into God's word and realized the Bible never says to keep resisting it. It says to change lanes, you know. As Paul says, to run, to flee from these things. And when I when I did replace them, in the end, those things didn't seem to fill the void uh, that I was trying to fill. There was always continuously seemed to be there was something missing over there. It's 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 strange, and and I'm sitting here wondering is is this the same for you? Those things that you are doing that you can't stop doing that you might that you know might even be addicted to. If I can put it in brackets over here. Because it's not necessarily an addiction. But if it is, that thing definitely needs to break its hold on you. And we've said to resist it in the beginning. But we can't, we can't keep fighting. The re, you know, we can't keep resisting. You have to change your lanes. You have to move in a different direction. You have to go somewhere else. You need to focus somewhere else. You need to think of other things, you know. And there's... Two times, actually, apart from when, when you know, what we said the other day, there's two short pieces of verses that are found in Corinthians that also tells us this, this very thing. You know, one is in Corinthians 6 and the other one in 1 Corinthians chapter 10. 6 verse 18 says to flee from sexual immorality. Chapter 10 verse 14 says, therefore, my beloved, flee from idolatry. So he's saying to stop trying to fight it, you know, stop telling yourself to stop thinking of an elephant. Remember this? He says, flee, run away from it. Just run, run away from it. I'm even thinking even David ran away when Potiphar's wife tried to get a hold of him. Let's call it that. The Bible says he ran away. So he didn't try and resist or anything. He just ran away. He did try and resist in the beginning, as as the story goes. He kept on saying no, and then eventually she just came at him, and he, you know, ran. Anyway, but now changing lanes, you find something else that might not be good for you. Like I used to do also. Only when I realized this, though, my mind started shifting, and those cogs finally started clicking a little bit when I realized, listen, but the stuff I'm... I'm doing over here, the, the stuff I'm trying to use to replace this this issue that I find as an issue, this thing that I think isn't good, this thing that I, I you see, at that stage, the, the times that I'm thinking of now is not even times where I was actively thriving to know God better, to get closer to God. I was still reading my Bible, I was still going to church, I just wanted to live a better life. <laughs> I have to put that between brackets because just living a better life and not including God in it. I don't think these days is a better life at all anymore. But I realized, you know, so I didn't I didn't have it's funny how in those times you don't first think to go straight to God's word, to get into prayer. And you know, as much as some people reminded me, as much as sermons that I watched where people said this, as much evangelists that I watch, doesn't matter which messages I watch, as much as I watch these things and as much these are saying as even as much as I'm probably sitting here saying this to you this morning. It might not hit home yet. 
but it is going in. Your spirit is hearing exactly what he needs to hear. And when that when those cogs click, oh man, then it's going to be a good day for you. As it was a great day for me, you know. So I started asking the questions, what can I do then? Because this is not filling it. This is not doing what it, what it, what I feel it needs to do. It's not, it's not doing these things. Where can I go then? How can I? How can I? What can I? That's what I started asking. And then, then my mind went, ah, oh, God's word, you know, let's see what it says there. And, and by now, you know, we've mentioned a few times as well that we need to think on the good and worthy and pure things as per, what was that, Philippians 4 verse 8. It says, finally, brethren, whatever things are true and noble and just and pure and lovely of good rapport, if there's any virtue, if there's anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. That's what you replace with. You replace with worthy things. So question the worthiness, the purity, the nobility. Question those things of these things you're trying to replace f with first. One question that also always hangs on the back of my mind every single day these days when I want to do something. And if I have a half feeling in myself that this is useless, then I'll start asking, is this for the kingdom of God? Is this for the good and the benefit of the kingdom of God? It's a good question, I think, to keep at the back of your mind that pops up all the time, not just hangs at the back there and you never think of it. And um, even in Proverbs 4, also popped up this morning, verse 21, where Solomon writes to his son, he says, My son, give attention to my words, incline your ear to my sayings. Don't let it depart from your eyes, keep them in the midst of your heart. Now, even though Solomon was writing to his son over here, I think this is something we can take that God says to us, is to keep his words in our hearts to not let it depart from us so we can meditate on these things you know it's it's i love how the bible comes together in such vast different areas years apart if you look at the time frame when all these things were written but when it's something you honestly also struggle with it's always good to have an accountability buddy find somebody who you can walk with somebody who can hold you accountable for what you say and for your actions because when you're doing it alone it's very easy to decide by yourself tell nobody and when you fail you don't even have to be hard on yourself you don't even have to pay it any mind you don't even know attention at all you don't even consider it when you do it alone then it's easy to falter and look past the issues and look past the falters and stuff the other side of that however is that it can become worse you can, you're definitely going to struggle for much longer, but it can become even worse. And if you fall alone, that's a different kind of problem. Ecclesiastes 3 verse 10 says, For if they fall, you know, when two people walk together, for if they fall, one will lift up his companion. But woe to him who is alone when he falls, for he has no one to help him up. And it's also nice that, that uh, another verse that popped up here was in Amos 3 verse 3 it says can two walk together unless they are agreed you know if we don't decide in the direction we're walking in together you and i then we we can't walk together can we we need to go yes yes we're going over there we're going we're going around this place we're going to have an ice cream there we're going to have a coffee over here or we're going to walk this way that's where we're going and then cool and then we walk together and if i trip and fall hey you can catch me help me up and then we keep going but if you trip and fall and you're alone that is a different kind of a whole new world of problems for you over there and one thing that i've learned in life as i said it's been said a few times throughout the last while is if you want to go fast you go alone but if you want to go far then you go in a group then you go with people you know and some of you are this close to your breakthrough some of you are this close to that thing in your life finally falling off and don't let this much condemn you don't let this much keep you in a place don't let this much keep you from the promised land that God has for, has for you. You need to get up and take it. That much is just where you need to grab it and take it. God sees all things, my friend. He sees you. He knows exactly where you are. He knows exactly what it is that you're facing. He's given you the equipment. He sent you the people. He's there with you. He's gone before you and the battle belongs to Him. Let Him do all these things for, it, for you. You can do this. Beat it. Lean on Him. You have what it takes. And to God, after all this, to God be all the glory forever and ever. Amen.